Welcome back to another fun Friday with Melanie at Moore Farms Botanical Garden. Today we're going to be talking about animal adaptations and I'm going to be showing you um, some examples with animal skulls. We're going to talk about three different types of adaptations and then I'm going to show you a fun activity you can do at home to help you visualize um, bird beak adaptations. So again, the definition of adaptation is the change or process of change by which an organism becomes better suited to its environment. And this happens over a very long period of time. It's not like when you go get a haircut. You can change your hair really quick. One day it's long, the next day it's short. An animal adaptation takes place it changes over thousands and thousands of years. So the animals that you observe outside today, they have changed to better suit their environments and how the outside world has changed as well. I'm going to start by showing you a couple of skulls. I'm going to show you an owl skull and a raven skull. So if I if you look at the eye sockets in both of these skulls, you'll see the owl over here has very um, round, very big eye sockets compared to the raven over here. This is because owls primarily hunt or they search for their prey at night. Owls are looking at their prey from a very high vantage point. So they need to be able to focus in on little mice and other rodents very far below them. And one other major difference you can see in these skulls is the beak. The beak of the owl is shorter and has much more of a hook on it, where the raven, the beak is much longer has a little bit of a hook, but not as much as the owl. And this has to do with the diet of each of these birds. The raven is more of an omnivore. That means it eats some small rodents, but also berries and seeds. So its beak needs to be a little longer to be able to search out and forage for those um, those berries, seeds, maybe worms in the ground, whereas the owl, it primarily eats small rodents and needs to be able to pull and tear when they eat. Two other skulls I'm going to show you are a carnivore skull for a bobcat. If you look at the teeth of the, car of the bobcat, its teeth are very sharp and pointy. This is because this animal is a, it's a carnivore and it eats meat. It needs to be able to pull and tear, kind of like the owl, and then grind with its back teeth. The herbivore here, this is a deer skull. So you see its teeth are a lot more flat and wide because the deer pulls in plants, shrubs, bushes, um, only plant material, and it grinds it like this with its back teeth. So now that we've talked about types of some skulls and we've seen some adaptations there, we're going to be talking about three different types of animal adaptations, behavioral, which is how an animal acts or how they behave. Structural, how they look on the outside. And physiological, which is how they are designed. Um, most of the time it, deal, it deals with the internal organs, so you may not always be able to see physiological. So I'm gonna give you a couple examples of each of these. For behavioral, we have birds migrating south in the winter. As the weather gets cooler up north, they want to move to warmer temperatures. 
so that they can mate and nest. Another example of behavioral is a desert mouse that is more active at night when the temperatures are cooler. A structural adaptation is a like a leaf insect. This insect uses camouflage to make it looks like a leaf. <laughs> so it blends in with the leaves on the trees and a predator is confused and doesn't know the difference. So it helps it hide from predators that way. Another structural adaptation is a poisonous frog. Um, a lot of poisonous frogs have very bright colors um, on their skin. And that tells predators to stay away because I am poisonous and I will make you sick. So physiological, one example of this is a monarch butterfly being able to eat the milkweed plant. The milkweed plant is normally toxic to other organisms, but the monarch butterfly, or when the monarch butterfly is a caterpillar, it's able to eat these, eat the plant without getting sick. Another example is a worm has a special organ called a crop and the crop helps it break down any little um, small rocks or pebbles that it may have taken in or ingested when it was um, sifting through the dirt and the soil and trying to get any other um, plant material. So it helps it break that down so it can digest it better. So, See if you guys can look outside, um, think about any other animal adaptations that you've seen or that you know of. And now I'm gonna show you an activity that you can do at home to help you see um, and visualize bird beak adaptations. So here I'm gonna show you an activity that you can do at home to help you visualize bird beak adaptations. Birds have all different kinds of shapes to their beak um, based on the things that they eat. So I have three tools here that I found in the kitchen that are going to help me um, as examples as bird beaks. I have tweezers, very tiny ends to those. I have something slightly bigger with a spoon type um, scoop and then I have these tongs. So with these beaks I'm going to be trying and picking up these seeds or other food items I found in the kitchen to try and see which beak or which tool is easier to pick up the seed with. So if I start here with my tiny tweezers and my pinto beans I can't really, well, I got one, but if I'm a bird, I'm gonna wanna pick up more than one at a time. If I go in with my next tool, next beak, I'm not really getting much of any with that beak. And I go in with this last beak that's more of a spoon. Oh yeah. See how I can pick up a lot more with those? So these, um, this spoon type would represent more of like a pelican that scoops up its food. If you've ever seen a pelican, they have sort of like a scoop or a spoon and they scoop up the water with the fish. So if we move on to a much smaller type seed, you're going to have sunflower seeds or these tuxedo seeds I have here. I'll go in with my tongs here. I picked up a few, a few, but I don't think I'd be able to carry them if I flew away. Again with the sunflower seeds, not picking up many. My scoop, 
I can pick up some sunflower seeds. That's pretty good. But not a lot with my, not a lot of the small seeds. But I have my tweezers. It's a lot easier to pick up these little seeds. And a lot of these little seeds would be found inside of um, plants or inside of a casing. So a bird that had this very tiny little beak would be able to reach inside and be able to pluck out individual seeds. So the last example I have here are um, some flakes. And I go in with my small tweezers, my pointy beak. I can pick up a few. Mm, it's kind of hard. I go in with my scoop. And it's a little better. But I go in with my tongs. I can get a lot more in there. And they're very sturdy. I can fly with those. Those aren't going anywhere. So these would represent more of a bird like the raven that's going to want to trap and grab insects. It's a bigger, broader beak that it's able to um, just grab and snatch and be able to carry with it. So um, you can try this activity at home you can find, try, see if you can find similar tools in the kitchen or around your house. You can um, try this activity out yourself. And I will have those matching cards and the physiological, structural, and behavioral cards. So you can look at more examples of those and match those where they go. Thank you.